I the asshole for kicking my daughter out of my house for being pregnant? I, 45 female, have a 27-year-old daughter. She has six kids between the ages of 10 years and 11 months. There are three different fathers, and she received child support from two of them. She is still with the third one, and they have been together for five years. My daughter works part-time, and her fiancé is a chef full-time. They have lived with us for the past year and a half due to getting evicted from their last home. The kids and them have the upstairs bedrooms. There's two. But that's still crowded for six children. They are constantly asking me for help with phone bills. My husband and I have asked for no rent so they'd be able to save up money to get a home, which I do not believe they were doing. I have put up with loud voices throughout all hours and waking up at different hours to cater to children because I love my grandchildren. I never complain to my daughter because I believe family is very important. It's just that my children are all grown up. My youngest moved out four years ago and my husband and I have hopes to remodel. We didn't expect them to be living here this long. Christmas Eve, my daughter gathered us all around and announced that they were pregnant with baby number seven. Everyone was all excited, but I felt dread. That would mean another child in our house with not much room. I looked over at my husband and could tell he felt the same. We discussed later and decided we were going to have a talk with them and ask them to move out. Last night at dinner, I brought it up to my daughter and her boyfriend and we told them they have two months to find a place because we cannot have another child here. My daughter started crying, saying that she couldn't believe I'd throw her to the streets for having a baby. That this was completely unfair and not enough time. I told her I was sorry. It was painful for me as well. But these living conditions were impossible. She demanded I give her more time or she'd go to the courts. And I told her newsflash. The courts only give you 30 days. She then said my grandchildren were going to be homeless because I was selfish. She made a Facebook post asking for rooms for rent because she's pregnant and has nowhere to go. And her family doesn't give a sh** about her. So am I the asshole? Am I wrong for not wanting my sister at my wedding since she is in a wheelchair and will take up all the spotlight? My sister, 26, has been in and out of the hospital and I'm going to call her Anna. Anna got cancer when she was 15 and was able to beat it. But ever since, she's been having growths and anytime one appears, we're so worried about the cancer coming back. My issue is that she always makes these announcements that she needs to go to the doctors again at the worst possible times. At the beginning, I thought it was just bad timing, but it's happened so many times when I hit a milestone. My graduations, my birthdays, my engagement party, and any time she makes an announcement she needs to go back to the hospital, my whole family flocks to her. I have had my birthday dinner turn into my relatives flocking to her for the whole night. So I had a dinner party to announce my wedding date for my relatives, and it was going so great and so fun until Anna told my mom she has to go to the hospital. Soon, everybody forgot about the reason for the dinner party and it was quiet. My aunt even stepped in to do a prayer for Anna. So again, another event was taken over. As a result, I went low contact. But she was invited to the wedding. That's in two weeks. I learned today that she's been on and off a wheelchair, so she will need to take it just in case for the wedding. After asking if our family was aware and them telling me no because they didn't want them to worry, I let them know they need to inform them. But again, they said no, they don't want them to worry and would not do that. I had enough and told them you need to tell them before my wedding, but again, a no. I then informed them that Anna is not invited. This triggered a whole argument about how I'm wrong, but my point is I'm sick of her stealing the spotlight. And that would definitely happen if she rolls in with a wheelchair. Edited to add that I'm going to do a mass blast to all my relatives saying she's in a wheelchair and unsure if she'll be able to make it to my wedding. And to keep my sister in their thoughts and prayers because I do want to stay ahead of this. Am I wrong? Am I wrong for refusing to pay for dental fees after a kid broke his teeth on a macadamia nut at my house? My friend, 39 female June, brought her 8-year-old son Steven over to my house today. June and I were just chatting over a cup of tea when there was a huge scream from the kitchen and we rushed to find that Stephen had tried to eat a whole macadamia nut with the shell. For some context, the nut is a white nut surrounded by the hardest and most smooth chocolate looking shell you've ever seen. So he'd obviously thought it was chocolate and tried to eat it from a closed Tupperware container on the kitchen island. They were there because I had the intention of cracking them later with a hammer. My friend first got on Stephen for eating something obviously not meant for him and took him to the emergency dental. That's where she learned that he had cracked one of his molars and it was apparently quite bad. Apparently, as it's still his first set of teeth, they'll just be pulling it out, but she wants me to pay half. Her reasoning is that it was my macadamia and it was on the kitchen island and very accessible.
there is just no way i would never let this person back over to my house now mind you i do feel like child proofing the house a little bit because you do care about your friend you care about their kid obviously is nice and considerate like make sure that there's no you know um scissors out make sure there's no knives on the table of course like common sense things but i do feel like no one's thinking about macadamia nuts especially not somebody that doesn't have a child from the story i don't think they do um we just i wouldn't think that and everybody's eating the mom up on reddit about not even watching her kid i feel like things do happen mistakes do happen but trying to put it on your friend is actually insane to me like baby if you need help with the bill you weren't expecting to pay that big bill you don't have the money you need me to loan you some money that's a little different like go ahead and let me know that and i mean i'll always help you if i can but trying to put it on me because i did something wrong is insane I would be more embarrassed that I wasn't watching my kid to my friend. Story time. I broke up with my boyfriend of four years after the worst day of our lives. And he is calling me to be cruel. Do I owe this man a conversation? About a year ago, I broke up with my boyfriend of 4.5 years. Just a few days beforehand, we had discussed marriage and kids. The day of the breakup, he got belligerently drunk. S aid my best friend and then put both of our lives in danger. I won't go into detail, but later on, he said he was thankful that I didn't call the police on him. I broke up with him that night and he had his brother pick him up from my house. He claims he does not recall anything that happened due to being blacked out drunk. Like I mentioned, previous to this day, we had a great relationship. But once I broke things off, I realized how toxic it was. I was codependent on him. My only priority was his happiness and safety. I was fearful of him and tiptoed around topics that he was sensitive, mainly having to do with stability like when would you get a job, when will we move in, what plans do you have for the future, etc. When we broke up, it's like the goggles were off and I was seeing the relationship for what it truly was. The day after the breakup, he was blowing up my phone asking why I had broken up our 4.5 year relationship over one bad day. I asked him for space and we didn't talk for a week. At the end of the week, we had a 20 minute phone call conversation where I explained why this relationship was toxic for the both of us and how we neglected parts of ourselves to force it into happen, like two puzzle pieces that don't fit. By the end of the phone call, we were on the same page and agreed that we didn't need to have further conversations about the relationship. Over the past two weeks or so, he has kept messaging me, begging to get back together and bringing up all different ways that he will change. I would reply but keep the message short and to the point that we would not be getting back together. Last night really irritated me because he said I was being cruel for being short with him and not willing to discuss further why our relationship went downhill so quickly. He also said that he would be blocking my cell phone number and overall just made me feel like crap. Do I owe him a conversation? I can't help but feel lousy about how things ended even though it was perhaps the most fearful day of my life. Just to let you know about my friend, she is okay and it was not rope like a previous commenter mentioned. It was unwanted touching. After I kicked him out, I went to get her from where we were and we spent the rest of that weekend at her house discussing, processing what had happened. We've had no contact since. Am I the asshole for reporting the pizza delivery guy for sliding a note under my girlfriend's door? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, male 28, was spending the weekend with my girlfriend at her place. We decided to order some pizza and she ordered from her usual restaurant. When the delivery guy arrived, I opened the door, he looked at me confused, then proceeded to ask where my girlfriend was. I said excuse me, then asked what he was asking. He said nothing, it's just that he's used to delivering pizza to her, and this is the first time he saw me, so he thought she moved. I told him she was busy, then took the pizza and gave him money. While I was turning, I saw him still standing. I said, how can I help you? And he said, don't mind me, I'm just standing here waiting. I told him he shouldn't keep standing outside like that, and he rudely told me it wasn't my property. I got angry and didn't want to escalate, so I said this wasn't public property and he should leave. I then went inside and shut the door. Ten minutes later, I caught a note getting slid under the door. I opened the door and saw the pizza guy going downstairs. I stopped him immediately, then read what the note said. He kept calling my girlfriend with her name and said that he was worried about her and how sad he was that he didn't see her this time. I asked if he left the note just to confirm, then told him I'd report him to his boss for this behavior. He said this wasn't for me and I'm not the owner of this place, so it was none of my business. We argued loud enough for my girlfriend to come out. I told her what he did and she told me to leave it alone and go back inside. I said all right then, but as soon as I walked in, I called his workplace and wanted to speak to the manager. I told him what the guy did and he promised to take care of it and said he wasn't working for them anymore. 
When I told my girlfriend, she got mad saying I shouldn't have done that. I wanted to know if she was okay with what he did. She said no, but she can no longer order from the restaurant as they block customers that complain. I said good, but she said I overreacted and had no right to do this when it's not my apartment. Am I the asshole for asking my sister to stop fostering dogs so she could help me with my kids? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I, 38 female, have four kids, ages 11 months, 3, 5, and 10. I love them all more than anything, but I'll be the first to admit that our house is constant chaos and it can be very exhausting. My sister, 33 female, is child-free and loves my kids and was happy to watch the older two or three sometimes to help me keep my sanity. This has been extremely helpful and I tell her all the time how grateful we are for her help. The kids used to go over to her house, but right now they can't because my sister is fostering an elderly chihuahua. She claims she can't have them over for the time being because they would stress the dog out. Her dog is extremely frail and timid, so I think this was a fair assessment. But this was the fourth dog she's fostered, all of which couldn't be around my kids. The most recent dog took eight months to find a home for, but most of her dogs took even longer. When she told me she found an adopter, I knew I could finally breathe again and joked about how I was glad she could babysit again. She then told me there was a second dog that desperately needed a new foster, and that she planned to take in that one as soon as her current dog was gone so she couldn't do any more babysitting than she already is. I told her about how much I've been struggling since she got the dog, about how little sleep I get at night and how my husband hasn't been helping as much as he should. I then asked her point blank to not get another dog. She comforted me but didn't agree on anything and said she needed some time to think. I know I'm asking a lot but I don't have anyone else to help me. I can't afford a babysitter long time and my friends all have kids of their own to look after. My kids will always come before a dog and that's the reason I was willing to request it. I've told different people about the situation and have gotten a wide range of heavily biased opinions. I would never demand her to do this if she didn't want to. Am I the asshole for kicking my pregnant sister and her husband out of the house eight months earlier than we planned? Let's see this because this already sounds crazy. The title sounds super bad, I know. Using filler names so this isn't linked to me. So my sister, she's 40, Sophie is 26 and her husband is Ben is 28 have been trying for a kid recently. And about three months ago, her sister confirmed that, to the family that she was pregnant. I also have two kids, my son, Max, who's 17, and my daughter, Amelia, who's 11. Max is gay, which I have to point out because it's pertinent to the incident, and he is currently dating another girl named Charlie. If I'm being honest, I don't completely understand everything about his sexuality, but I support him unconditionally and try my best to keep an open mind and listen to his problems. I can tell he's happy with Charlie, and they often hang out at the house together watching movies or playing games. As long as they're being safe and responsible, I frankly don't mind what they do, and I've really gotten to know Charlie pretty well with how often he's here. I don't think he's out to his parents yet, so the boys will usually come here after school. We love a safe space provided. Okay. Um, okay, now on to the problem. So my sister and her husband recently got evicted from their apartment and they didn't have a place to stay. We've never been close, so I suggested she, I suggested she try our parents first, but she was adamant that she stay at my house since we have a guest room. Mm. And if they stay at our parents, they'd have to sleep on the couch. I gave in, of course, because I'd feel terrible if I didn't. And we agreed that she and her husband could stay a year to find a house to get their life together. About two months in, I'm honest, and I'm honestly surprised she didn't find out earlier since they weren't being subtle about it. Sophie saw Charlie and Max kiss in the living room while she was in the kitchen with her husband and immediately gave me a disapproving glare. She had never overtly acted overtly homophobic to anyone, so I was surprised when she went full on freak out. She said something along the lines of, why are you letting them do that? That isn't normal. And went on that stereotypical boys are for girls and boys shouldn't be together, blah, blah, blah. And basically super hateful and mean. My son really liked Sophie and I could tell what she was saying was really hurting him. Oh, and this is where I may be the asshole. I got pissed and told her that she had the rest of the day to pack her shit and get out of my house. They left to stay with a friend of Sophie's, but now I'm getting phone calls and texts telling me I'm heartless and that she's pregnant and <laughs> who... Yeah, and how could I? Should I have let her stay? Honestly, I don't know what to do. But Max, look, Max looks absolutely heartbroken right now. I don't think he was expecting her to act like that. Am I the asshole? I don't think so, because I feel like you got to protect your children, period. Like, I'm sorry, but she cannot be doing that in his household. Like, that's his safe space. What do y'all think in the comments? Because, child, Sophie got to go.
Am I no wrong for insisting that my niece pays for my daughter's surgery? My niece, Andy, 19, baby, 15 months, grabbed a hold of my daughter's, Kayla, 13, earring at Christmas and ripped it out completely. The earlobe will require plastic surgery to fix to look nice again. It is said to be around $2,000 in the ER, but the nurse said that she can't give me the exact quote and gave me some recommendations for plastic surgeons. The ER trip was a nightmare on Christmas and it was a two hour wait when my daughter was in pain. The whole time I was waiting there, my sister or Annie didn't even bother texting my daughter or me to apologize or to even see how she was. My husband, me, and my daughter are so mad at them and I want to take Annie to court if she doesn't pay for the surgery. The surgery would be considered elective because our insurance is labeled as cosmetic and it would come out of our pockets. Annie said that she can't afford to pay for the surgery even though her baby just walked into my daughter unexpectedly and ripped her earrings out of her ear. They said it was an accident and things like that happened. I have three children and none of them have ever done something like that and I would be embarrassed if they did and I would apologize and offer to pay. My sister called me a bitch for even suggesting that Andy pay because Andy is saving up to move out. I don't think my request for money is unreasonable, but Andy and my sister have blocked me from texting them, and my husband is insisting that if we're forced to go to small claims, he wants pain and suffering added to the surgery bill because my daughter's ear hurts so much and Andy never once expressed concerns over Kate's injury. There's been a recent update on the girl in the freezer's mysterious death. On September 8, 2017, a young 19-year-old girl named Kanika Jenkins told her mother that she was going bowling into the movies with some friends to celebrate her new job at a nursing home. She borrowed her mother's car and left the house around 11 p.m. This would be the last time Teresa Martin would see her daughter alive. It turns out that Jenkins went to a hotel party on the ninth floor of the Crown Plaza Chicago O'Hare Hotel in Rosemont, Illinois. Security footage showed the group entering from the side entrance around 1 a.m. During the party, Jenkins' friends are sharing videos on Snapchat and some of them are even live on Facebook. But it was clear that the girls were not happy. Males were aggressively flirting with the girls even after being told to back off. Around 1.30 a.m., Jenkins sends a text to her sister. This was the last time any of her family members would ever hear from her again. Around 3 a.m., the girls decided to leave the party. In the hotel lobby, Jenkins realized that she left her belongings like her keys and cell phone back in the room. Some sources claim that her friends left her alone in the hotel lobby, while others say that they left her in the hallway on the ninth floor by the elevator. Either way, all of her friends supposedly went to grab her belongings from the party, leaving her all alone for about 10 to 20 minutes. When the group returned, Jenkins had vanished. They searched the hotel trying to find her, but had no luck. Between 4 to 4.30 in the morning, they decided to finally call her mother, who quickly made her way to the hotel. She pleaded for help from the hotel's front desk, but they refused. She then requested to see security footage or for security to help her find her daughter, but they told her that only police could look at the tapes. At 7.15 in the morning, Martin called 911 about her missing daughter. The dispatcher told her that her friends could be lying and Jenkins was probably passed out drunk in a random hotel room. He told Martin to go home and relax and wait a few more hours for her to show up. The next day though, Jenkins was officially reported missing and police began their investigation around 1.15 p.m. on September 9th. Hotel staff claimed that they looked at the security footage and didn't see anything. Police searched the hotel and surrounding areas, but again, nothing. Around 10 p.m., an officer decided to look back through the tapes just in case he missed something and discovered a clip of Jenkins stumbling around the hallways of the hotel lobby around 3.20 in the morning. She appeared to be extremely intoxicated, confused, and stumbling into walls. This is when they quickly launched a team to trace her last steps. Crime Fanatic Friday Part 2, The Girl in the Freezer, new updates in the case. When police retraced Kanika Jenkins' last steps, it showed that she had gone into an elevator and taken it down to the lower level of the hotel where she stumbled out and down the hallway. The tapes show her walking upstairs into another hallway and at one point walking into the men's bathroom. She eventually finds her way to the kitchen, which was under renovation, and the last known footage shows her walking through the back towards the double freezer. The video doesn't show her walking into the freezer, but it's speculated that she opened the door, walked in, and couldn't find her way out again. While the kitchen was under renovation and not in use, the freezer was still running because it was being used for extra storage for food for an upcoming new restaurant in the hotel. On September 10th, 2017, at roughly one in the morning, Jenkins was found dead inside the freezer unit, lying on the floor, hair messy with one shoe off. She had been wearing ripped jeans, a crop top jean jacket, and a white bra. The police described her as frozen solid, but didn't suspect foul play. The autopsy came back inconclusive, however, later reports said that she died from hypothermia. She also had some scratches and wounds on her foot and her ankle that were exposed from not having a shoe, but other than that, no wounds or markings were found. No signs of struggle or fight were found either. However, people online and her own family think and speculate theories of what happened as there was video footage from the party and her friends making comments that were suspicious, but there's no compelling evidence to back up that they had anything to do with it. Others say that the hotel tampered with the footage and had something to do with her death. Either way, in 2018, Jenkins' family filed a $50 million lawsuit against the Crown Plaza Hotel for her death. The suit claimed that the hotel was negligent for not properly securing the renovated freezer area and locking it off from the public. Jenkins' mother also stated that if they had looked at the security tapes sooner when she was urging them to, they might have found her sooner and alive. In October 2023, Teresa Martin, Kanika Jenkins' mother, reached a settlement of $10 million. The terms and agreements won't be made public as Jenkins' family is seeking to keep the deal under seal, citing safety and privacy concerns. 
Am I wrong for ruining Christmas and being upset that the only gifts I got for my family were joke gifts? My family got mad and told me not to go and just stay because it wasn't serious, but I still left and put my phone on do not disturb. I had several missed calls and texts from my family calling me names like ungrateful, sensitive, and childish. They said that I ruined Christmas and made my parents upset because I left. Well, the next day, I exchanged and opened gifts with my boyfriend and his family, and one of the gifts I got was the book I wanted. I decided to post it on Instagram story, and not even zero minutes after posting it, my sister sent a screenshot of my story to the family group chat. They basically got mad at me for leaving and told me I ruined Christmas over some presents. Then they said I owe everybody, especially my parents, an apology. Because my mom spent New Year's sad because of my actions. So now, I want an outside party to tell me if I'm wrong. Am I wrong for being upset about the gifts and for leaving? Am I wrong for kicking my daughter-in-law out on New Year's Eve for calling me mom? My eldest son and his wife are called Ed and Edna, and my youngest son and his wife are Sam and Kat. For context, I've known Edna her whole life. Because when she was seven, her mom got diagnosed with cancer, so I started to help take care of her. Her and Ed were best friends, so it made it easy, but when she turned 10, her mom passed away, so I took over all duties of raising a daughter. Then she started to date my son in college, and they got married later on. I genuinely look at her as my daughter because I basically raised her. Her dad drank himself to death when she was 19. She would spend all holidays and all breaks with us. When they got married though, they bought the house four houses down and have been living there. Now Kat is very sweet. She can cook well and we bond in the kitchen and get along great. But I really don't like being called mom by her. I don't like it when people or children call me auntie or nicknames and I don't mind Edna calling me mom because I do feel like I raised her and earned that title. Now I've talked to her and my son so many times about this, saying it doesn't make me comfortable but she says that it should and that it's awkward for her to call me by my first name. This New Year's dinner, she made it a point to call me mom in every single sentence, and I was annoyed. So I pulled her aside and told her to knock it off, and she said it's not fair Edna can call me mom, but she can't. I responded that I raised Edna, so it makes sense. Edna has no other family other than us, but you have a huge family with a mom that loves you. But she said that she feels that I'm rejecting her from the family. So I said, if you feel after all I've done for you, this is the thing that makes you feel isolated, you need help to be grateful. Among other things, I paid half of her college loans and helped her for the house they live in. She said that I'm a bitch and Edna can be my favorite daughter-in-law and it's creepy that I will babysit pups and not my grandkids because she and Sam will never come back. I told her to get out and be a brat somewhere else and that's when Sam got involved and dragged Kat away. Kat lives six hours away and I can't drive well and they don't have a guest bed for me to stay in at night. I pay 25% in childcare though. Sam sent me a text asking me to apologize because it's such a small thing and Kat is serious about her threat. Even my grandchildren call me by my name. Am I an asshole for kicking my brother and his family out after his son stole my engagement ring? Disclaimer, this is not my story. The reason I, 26 male, know is because I literally caught him in my room going through my things and it's on camera. My nephew is nine and has a habit of stealing things. They've gotten in trouble a few times at stores because he'd leave with something in his pockets. But he's a kid, so they usually say he just forgot he had it. Even at school, my brother has had to talk to the principal multiple times. It doesn't seem like they've done anything to stop it. They had to come stay here with me because my brother lost his job and they weren't going to make it with all their bills, including rent. He's doing Uber right now while he searches for a job. A month ago, I finally bought an engagement ring for my girlfriend that I was planning on proposing to soon, but now I don't know. It's a $4,000 ring that I spent over a year saving up for. It's been hidden in my room under one of my drawers. I found my nephew snooping in my room and I told my brother to control his kid. I then got a cheap spy cam just in case. Last week, I noticed it was out of its box. After checking the camera, it showed he was in there again when I wasn't home. My brother and his wife have yelled at him. He says he left it by the TV in the guest room, but it's not there. They looked through all their stuff in his too. I know for a fact he's lying about not having it because that's the same thing he said about one of my watches he took then ended up finding. By the second day, my brother tells me they can't find it at all. I told him either they find the ring or he repays me the $4,000 I spent on it. And if not, they can't stay here anymore. My brother got really upset and said that I know how their situation is right now. It's a tough spot, but I can't ignore the fact that his kid, he can't parent, took something extremely important that cost a lot of money. They were given a week to leave my house if they don't find the ring. They're not staying.
staying at a cheap motel, but my brother won't stop begging to come back. What they're paying right now each night is coming directly out of their savings. He won't stop calling me heartless, and my nephew keeps saying he's sorry. It's just hard right now. Am I the asshole for switching from non-dairy to dairy milk and accidentally making my flatmate shit herself at an interview? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I'm not lactose intolerant. I buy hazelnut milk because I like to have hazelnut syrup in my coffee. And adding hazelnut milk makes it even more nutty. My flatmate is severely lactose intolerant and has been drinking my milk ever since she moved in a few months ago. I don't have an issue with sharing milk with her, but the issue is that she drinks so much of it. I'll only get a single cup of coffee out of an entire carton. Sometimes she'll drink the entire carton before I've had a single drink. She never replaces it, refunds me, or even acknowledges that it wasn't hers to drink. At some point, she stopped buying her own milk and I was having to buy new milk daily. I asked her multiple times why she was drinking my milk and said if she does, can she buy a new carton? She would say sorry, she just grabbed the first milk she saw. And that she'd get me a new one, but just never would. She started getting annoyed when I brought it up and would say I was being dramatic when I mentioned how much it cost. Last week, I got sick of it and decided to go back to drinking dairy milk, thinking she would buy her own milk, and I thought wrong. The dairy milk is clearly labeled, but she still helped herself. Unfortunately, the day she decided to drink dairy milk was the day she had a new job interview. The effects of dairy lace coffee she took with her kicked in and she was in the middle of it and she didn't make it in time. She came home absolutely furious and laid on to me about how I ruined her life. How this job was an opportunity that she needed and I destroyed it for her by being selfish. Also that I did it deliberately because I didn't want to share. She thinks I'm in the wrong because I knew she was lactose intolerant. So by switching to dairy milk when I knew she was drinking my milk and might potentially drink it again, I was putting her at risk. Also that milk sharing isn't a big deal and that I'm selfish. She thinks I was overreacting and I should have spoken to her about it instead of secretly changing milks. She has also threatened to report me to the police. My husband suddenly decided that he doesn't want any more children. She is 30 and he is 36. Let's get into it. My husband has one young son who I have raised and considered my own. When we were dating and all through our relationship, he said he wanted at least two more children to give our son some siblings. We started trying to get pregnant early this year. We got pregnant and suddenly he changed. He wasn't excited and said that he it was definitely our last and didn't want to announce it publicly. Unfortunately, that pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. Oh man. He is now saying that he doesn't want to try again. And this is now my chance to leave him before I end up stuck and unhappy forever. Frankly, I'm stuck and I love him. And leaving him means leaving our son too. It feels like both staying and leaving would ruin my life in different ways. Bro, damn, I feel for sis because it's like... For real. Like, I don't know how long they've been together. I don't think she said that at all in the in the post. No, she didn't. But, like, for real. Like, why he... I mean, honestly, like, why, why did he put that on her? Why did he put that on her? I wonder what it is. It sounds like something deeper. It's definitely some things that he is not saying. Because what changed what happened you know what i'm saying but also i feel for sis because like why would you just be like oh well you can get out of my life if like now not to say that he said that like that but he did <laughs> but uh but like as if she hasn't raised this whole child that she now feel is feels like that's her child because shit that's her child you know what i'm saying that it's more to that story it's more gotta be gotta be gotta be because what what y'all think in the comments i don't even know like i'm mad for her i'm mad Whew. child okay anyway what y'all think in the comments i would love to hear your opinion 